Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Svante Schubert, and I'd like to give you an update on the ODF toolkit. Um, to my person, um, I might just say it during the talk, but um, I'm also involved uh, with Michael Stahl in the Oasis TC. I'm, work, I'm, I'm a co-editor and a co-chair from ODF TC, and with Michael uh, Stahl as well, a co-maintainer of the ODF toolkit, and I'd like to tell you, give you an, an update on what's, what's going on there. So the, the highlight, first of all, it's been last year, November, but wasn't able to, to tell you that. We did two releases um, last year. That was the um, last time JDK 8 and then JDK 11. It's just uh, there's a, there, was a, there was a gap um, for, um, for the tooling. And um, finally, um, I was able to re, um, re establish the code generation, which was um, not used and broken after 11 years and um, also worked myself completely into this area and uh, um, made um, a release for the multi-schema validator, which is an underlying. It sometimes it feels like you're working through old ruins of antique uh, technology. Um, there, in, the, in the flowering time of XML, there, there were validators flourishing and, and lots was going on. And this is from this time and we took it over. Um, and uh, I, yeah made a build system from Ant to, to, um, to Maven, so it's uh, building out of the box with a JAS inside and uh, GDK enabled and yeah. And uh, Michael did a first fix for, um, for it and um, yeah, and we're continuing work on that. So uh, basically, we still haven't got a one zero zero, but um, um, I always thought there'd have to be something, uh, something special and, uh, but I believe, um, Nowadays, I believe we, we, we keep the, the API stable so don't, because there's no tooling in Java where you can say, oh, I have these API chains, apply them to your libraries and everything is fine. Usually you use it and suddenly the build breaks, yes. So um, even if we have package names with incubator, which is some IBM relict uh, when we're working together with them, but um, we just kept them and uh, might do refactoring on a different branch. And also doing the finalization of um, um, the in-document search API for, for NJ0, which is basically, despite of prior projects that were mentioned, um, the, the, uh, that were the sponsorship of the work that was ongoing, the, uh, the generation and all this, all my time here in the, in the ODF toolkit. And also the, re, uh, the reason why I rejoined the ODFTC back again. So what's the ODF toolkit? And obviously it's not a silver bullet, it's a silver hammer here. And now it's, it's for ODF, the file format, I, and um, it's for developers. It's, um, it's in Java mostly. And just to give you a brief update on what's about ODF, it's just a zipped file with XML. Um, there's something called MetaInf and Manifest, which is like a content table. And in early days, it was meant to, to be reused by, by PDF. And it was used by EPUB, but unfortunately, they forked, or we forked, I'm not sure. Um, there was miscommunication, and um, they used their own signature, uh, um, which was different than an ODF 1.2. And we did a release on ODF 1.3 last year in 27th uh, of April, April. And uh, what's special on that release was that we, we bundled all the tooling for the ODF release. And this is um, where this can help as well. So an ODF, think about it's a, it's a blueprint uh, where all ODF applications um, um, are derived from. So everyone who's able to uh, read and write um, ODF, like Microsoft Office, LibreOffice, is an ODF application. So from history, we started very early in the early 2000s and in, in StarOffice, where most of, of us, some of us came from, um, and StarOffice, you might know, is um, the inheritor, uh, the, the ancestor from um, OpenOffice, LibreOffice, um, the source base. And there we, we came together that it might be nice to have some Java. We were Sun, the inventors of Java, libraries on the server, just to, to have a low memory footprint um, or just, just some tooling on the server. And um, then we had a joint went through, uh, with IBM and uh, they did a fork on, on simple ABI that was rejoined, but unfortunately it was not merged again. So uh, finally we, we um, um, dropped it last year because there was a lot of uh, copied code in, in there, yes. Okay, and um, what we might say as well is that I uh, continued working since my drop off 2011 from Oracle as a freelancer and was working for Open Exchange on a web office, which used this again as a backend for, um, 
for a web office. The reason for this is you put a document in and it's being yeah, unzipped, the XML uh, extracted, and then um, earlier at Sun, we transformed it to HTML, but um, if you have multi-collaboration, this is a bad design idea, because if you get much HTML back, you don't know what the others have done. It's just like you have to find the changes. So what we did in Open Exchange was we, we um, transformed this um, document to, uh, uh, to changes, right? And um, I, I, show you, I show you about this later a bit. Okay, so, but it's a toolkit and there are more things. And the only thing that has a GUI is the validator. And you, you can browse as odfvalidator.org and uh, this, um, basically comes, I don't think the LibreOffice Libre Office logo is within, but it's very simple. Um, it's, it's small funding from 2011 where um, the only, only uh, ODF validator, very similar to that, was within the firewall of OpenOffice, but as soon as everyone was dismissed, we had no uh, online validator more. more. So NLNet was uh, providing um, a f a small funding for me to, 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 to build something there and um, to clean this up. So um, there's the online validator, and you, but also you can run it by command line. And we have something um, uh, where you can run XSLT directly on, on XML within. It's not the most prominent use cases, but the most prominent is, of course, um, if you like to edit the um, ODF. And you might be certain you don't do it with a layout, like in LibreOffice, but you can insert and um, delete XML. And later on, now with uh, 10, uh, 2010, I get a prototype funding uh, for this. I um, merged the uh, earlier fork from Open Exchange, where we worked about three years on, on this topic. And um, whenever you now call Java, this jar all included with an ODT file, it drops out a lot of changes, like the user would have created this. Oh, I will simply now uh, show you how this looked like. Think, think about this. You see this? No. Don't see it. Wait a minute. I have to finish just a second. No, oh, yeah, yeah. Don't doing presentations so often. I think I have to move this over. All right. Here we go. Yes. So we, if you have a have a simple a simple file, then um, you can. I move this over as well. Here we go. You have Java jar and this jar file and this as parameter. Um, this documentation of of these changes then you will um, check, check here. You will have JSON because it's a web thing and every line is, an, is, is, a, is a change of a user because um, also something later on, but um, we, we're still living in a floppy disk paradigm. It's pretty stupid. Like we, we exchange a document attached to email and cloud, but if you want to collaborate really with other people, you, you have to ask them the main question, what have you done was you have changed to be able to merge these changes into the gold master. And this is a totally uh, design paradigm change of, of, of working. So um, here's like, at, I don't see if you, I'm not sure if you can see it. I just make, try to, don't do it so long. Um, just a second. Oh yeah, no, I got it. No, I don't got it. Anyway, I continue the slideshow. So any, every line is a, is a change, basically, and it's like, it's user changes, so the semantics is something different. It's, um, oh my god, here we go. Quickly, 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 check, 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 check. Here we go. So, um, here I was. So, um, this is what was needed to have collaboration. That's in the back end. It's working, and um, and I use this for my search engine as well. Uh, not my search engine. I use from Edward Zimmerman's search engine for the NL uh, project. I'm, I I don't um, deal with the XML directly, but on a higher level, on this JSON files and uh, create therefrom searchable content for the search engine. So basically, the what's the architecture um, using a car for uh, uh, Alcambra from uh, Almeria? Um, what's the architecture? So there's the ODF DOM, which is the core part, uh, which is loading the document, the ODT, or everything, and, and, and zapping it, and, um, and this is generated um, from a source code generator. So it's just a compile time um, dependency, and this source code generator was totally overworked for myself um, in the past months, and, um, and, and improved a lot, I, and can be used for other things as well. 
I'll show you a little later. So, and the other thing is, um, so what, what is the source code generator? There's always the grammar. It's in Relax and G grammar. And, um, and this is being loaded from this multi-schema validator, which is called this way because you can also um, load XSDs and DTDs. And, um, and then something like templates, uh, a bunch of velocity templates, where you have text files, uh, we have iterations on it where uh, generate like every methods, like um, for every child element, um, a child method is being generated or attribute. So, so the idea is um, we have a simplification here by code generation. The user get a type DOM tree and um, they don't know to have to know uh, or read the, the grammar, but most of it has been generated. So, and this is very helpful, and you, you can use the other grammars for the gram for other things, like you know, the question, is a, can a text P ever be nested in a document? And the funny thing is, yes, it can, but the layout is only, then it's not uh, a layout like a feature paragraph. They're only in a, on, a, um, on the first level, yes. So, um, and this can be done by loading this, this document, this graph, uh, sorry, this, this grammar into a graph. So, um, and that's, there's something which I'm which continually doing is um, we have to deal with the complexity. Like here in one or two, it was about 600 elements and 1,300 attributes. And this number raised was, sorry, other one. This number was, da -da -da -da, wrong button. <laughs> okay, um, this number was raised, look here. It was raised a little bit and um, it's very difficult to read this, this XML if you just uh, skim through it. So the first step was for one to three, I, um, I used a little trick in transformation. Uh, now we have um, the, the grammar file as an HTML with links, so it's a bit easier. And you see here, this is Relax and G, there's a definition element and optional, and you find uh, choice and these things also. And um, the, the thing what, what, what really came clear to me the last year or the year before was that RNG is really simplistic. It's like, if you take a look at it, the specification just took 21 pages and tutorial 22. But if you take a look at XSD, then there are 360 pages for one the zero or 380 more than this for the, for the grammar. And personally, I can really read the primer. Every, everything else I have to jump to it. It's, it's to me, not unreadable. I will try again, but and additionally, there are papers um, that state that RelaxNG is more expressive than XSD and DCD. So um, I really invite you to, to take a look at it um, and um, play a little around with the generation and what you can uh, do with it. And you might do it not only for, you can create your own RelaxNG for what you like and create source code or, or documentation from it. So um, there's one thing that's also very impressive. Um, I really um, look at the bold one. It's called, um, I call it regular expression derivative. It's this, uh, the inventor, Bruce, I don't know how to spell it, this name. Uh, it's a paper from the 60s. And usually the people know, think that pattern matching, uh, regular expression, you have to do it with a um, non deterministic finite automa, uh, uh, with backtracking search, or uh, um, uh, a transformation deterministic finite automa. But this is pretty simple and it's very intuitive. You have this. Um, Foo or frac, you know this, your, your grammar will be foo or frac, and then you get a, an, an F character, then your regular expression is changing. It's being derived from it, from what you find. So the state you, 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 you're going, you're having during the parsing is changing. And this is the algorithm that James Clark was using for multi schema, of, um, sorry, for, for Jing and um, KK. Uh, um, I can't pronounce this, <laughs> neither I have to train this earlier. <laughs> it's, uh, the, 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 the nice Jap uh, Japanese guy who was working for Oracle and uh, who invented also um, Jenkins and uh, yes, and he, he um, gave this basically to me over, he's now a CTO for some company and uh, anyway. So, so this is very simple, this algorithm, yes, and I, I really have to wrap my hand around it more a little bit and um, why this is so cool and, um, and yeah, just to, to point it and um, it's, it's quite genius. So what we have currently in the spec is something like this. Like you see the form property, which is already fine, yes. You see the form property, you see the element, you see the, the, um, the child elements, and sometimes you see the, 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 um, the property, yes. So, um, and we have links to it in HTML, you see like the, the hashtag, you can gener uh, generate jumps to it, which is quite fine. But um, 
uh, and now we, we have a generation, still ugly, <laughs> alpha version, yes. Um, we have also the, um, to, to understand the regs on G easier, um, I generate this now. I have the parent element and the, the attributes, child elements, and, and the child relationship. And um, what's coming next, end of the year, early next year, is, sorry, oh God, is, is to, to, um, to see, look here, you see it's only, um, you have certain attribute, but it doesn't mention that they have to come in pairs, right? And this should be uh, made obvious, the Redux and G, like in a, something which is, I would say, very similar to regular expression, that uh, developers can understand what is the, um, what is the relationship between the child elements, okay? So, and the reason why we're doing this is just to, um, that the documentation is easier out of the box, but also I think, because it's a blueprint, we should be able to generate improved source code from it, yes? To, um, like, um, you can have a choice of things in, in the, in the um, DOM for that. And there are other things in the specification like, um, only if this attribute exists, this value will be uh, evaluated. I would call it a trigger attribute, but we haven't, um, it's just written text and we have not annotated. We cannot extract the semantic. And um, where I like to drive, uh, uh, drive through it is that blueprints um, should be able to generate source code from as much as possible, okay? So, so that's where, where, where we're trying to heading, okay? So, um, coming back to it, you see there, um, there, for instance, definition of a table, um, the blue is now the element, and uh, yellow uh, attributes are not here, but um, attributes, uh, the yellow things are like definitions, like intermediate numbers. And I, I create a graph from it, and um, put in a graph database, yes, and visit the graph it's an open source tool. You have to pick up your rendering, play a little bit around it, but you see it's quite complex, and um, if you zoom in, then these, you see the attributes and some choice epsilon, meaning a choice or nothing, which is optional here. So, and um, this is something we, we, we like to, uh, or I like to move further in. This is exactly what I'm trying to do earlier in the, in the documentation time. Okay, so, long story short, the source generator is being totally overworked and still there are some features there in the spec that cannot be generated and it's still ongoing work. Yeah? And it doesn't have to be only Java, yes? I really love to do this in, in Rust one time and, and maybe C++ there are parts that can, be, um, that can be generated from that as well, from the schema. Okay, so the source code generator is now with, with the grammar, schema validator, and, and the stinker pop, which is optional, yes, just to, 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 um, uh, to have a different angle on that. Okay, so um, derived from the ODF DOM is the ODF validator, which being using this, and of course, the XLT runner, because the XLT runner is just taking care of, 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 of um, accessing the streams from out the zip. And as I mentioned before, we deprecated simple AirBR and dropped it out because there was too much duplicated code. So the architecture is basically, or what we desire to, is to have a user API, a semantic API, a high-level API, but it's still ongoing work, that um, should obfuscate from the XML, yes. But um, currently this is plainly visible and um, just something we, we I would like to, to move into it, yes, because nobody would really like to know what is the uh, XML syntax, but just like to say, hey, open text, uh, insert an image, insert a table, three to three, and, um, and then a paragraph, hello world, and make the third to the seventh character red, yes? Something like, like this. So very high level, very user semantic like that's what I meant. Okay, and what I tried to show earlier as well is like this paradigm that been changed, and um, I tried to make this, that we really need to think differently. We all s still define um, documents, and especially for change tracking, would be nice to define a change prior to, to do that. And yes, as I said earlier, it's a merge problem uh, that we are just in, in a world where we have collaborating with ourselves with laptops and by sending emails or putting files on the cloud, it, it's just like faster floppy disk and we are unable to merge. And this should be part of the standard, this changing. And, only if we do this, we, we are able to um, have collaboration functionality and we have to think of changes like commits in a, in a, in a, in a, in a branch, yes. So, um, um, this is something I, I showed you earlier, it's like the idea that no longer documents, or initially the document is being dispatched, like you clone a, a GitHub repository, but afterwards you dispatch only, only changes and 
um, you are able to merge them, yes. And um, so that's the link that I showed earlier. You put in an ODT document in and you get a transformation and the user changes. It's totally equivalent, yes. And um, that's currently working and being used for, the, um, for web offices in the back end or for, for the search engine, for instance. And new changes, single things like uh, on the, the one minute paragraph on my grade, you place in, it's being transform, uh, transformed um, to a new DOM, yes. And, and by this, um, and, and by this you're, you're, you're able to, to, to really do collaboration. All right. So that's it, basically. Um, so what's, what's next? Of course, we, um, um, the generation is just a, a, still a pull request, and um, um, this will be, will be finished. There will be this famous 100. Um, 